Good morning. And please join us now as we pray for our sick, homebound, and those listed in our prayer book. Father of goodness and love, hear our prayers for the sick members of our community and for all who are in need. Amid mental and physical suffering, may they find consolation in your healing presence. Show your mercy as you close wounds, cure illnesses, make broken bodies whole, and free downcast spirits. May these special people find lasting health and deliverance. And so join us in thanking you for all your gifts. We ask this through the Lord Jesus, who healed all who believe. Amen. The entrance and the fun. God is, God is the holy place. holy place. God who unites those who dwell in this house. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today's Holy Eucharist is offered for the soul of Deacon Bab Esposito and for the soul of Marian Trepanier. On the beginning of this Holy Eucharist, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without uh, whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our rule and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold uh, fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The tent, which was called the meeting tent, Moses used to pitch at some distance away outside the camp. Anyone who wished to consult the Lord would go to this meeting tent outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, the people would all rise and stand at the entrance of their own tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses entered the tent, the column of cloud would come down and stand at its entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. On seeing the column of clouds stand at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and worship at the entrance of their own tents. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one man speaks to another. Moses would then return to the camp, but his young assistant Joshua, son of Nun, would not move out of the tent. Moses stood there with the Lord and proclaimed his name, Lord. 
Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity, continuing his kindness for a thousand generations and forgiving wickedness and crime and sin, yet not declaring the guilty guiltless, but punishing children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation for their father's wickedness. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship, and then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. So Moses stayed there with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights without eating any food or drinking any water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, he who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The son of man will descend his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever hears and has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Good morning. I don't know if you realize it or not, but there are two very powerful kingdoms that exist on the planet today. They've been here for quite some time now. And both of them are run by their own king and reign over it with their own philosophies and their own ways of doing things. And they very, have a very powerful and influential effect on human beings all over the world. Unfortunately, sometimes that's bad. And of course, they know the two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And they were in fierce battle with each other, constantly at war. Why? Us. We're the center of attraction. Each kingdom wants to take our soul. Each kingdom wants us to be with them. And that battle is going to go on forever. Okay? In today's gospel, Jesus is trying to get that point across. And he's trying to say, listen, evil exists, hell exists, listen, okay? Don't, don't write it off, okay? Now, when Jesus established his kingdom down here, when he came down and he was here present with us, of course his kingdom is, everything is being done to his holy church. Now, remember, the church is not a building, okay? I know that sounds silly, but some people, we get caught in it. It's a living, breathing entity, not, the church is not a something, it's a someone. It's Christ. He is the center of the church. It's his living, breathing body. And the church is his community of believers. It's his bride. It's it. He's the one that's there. He's the main shepherd. He's everything. Everything comes through his church. Now, unfortunately, in our magnificent and beautiful church, we have good people and bad people. We have people that sow weeds for seeds and people that sow wheat. And unfortunately, they're all mixed together. But Jesus says, don't worry about that. That's going to change when the harvest time comes. And of course, the harvest, what is the harvest? Harvest is really the end of the world. In Greek, there's a term for it, parousia, parousia, okay? The second coming, when Jesus comes in all his power, and he comes with his angels, and then everything's going to be separated and straightened out. That's at the end. But until then, we have to be careful. And I think we have to be reminded of something. Probably... In this battle, one of the most ingenious battle uh, tactics that uh, Satan came up with is two things. One, he doesn't exist anymore. Two, there is no hell. You know, people, to, when you talk about it, they look at you and say, ah, oh, come on, that's old stuff. That's old school. That's, you know, from the Middle Ages. They, they used to say that just to scare people. That doesn't exist anymore. There's no devil. Hmm, I don't think so. And there's no hell. Come on, look at Jesus. How could a loving, compassionate, merciful God who's done all he's done, he's loving, he's patient. Yes, I agree with you 100%. He would never send anybody to hell. You're 100% right on that too. But we send ourselves to hell. We're the ones that get ourselves there, okay? People do go there. And we got to be careful of that. we got to keep reminding ourselves of that. Unfortunately, in the last 50, 60 years, even the church itself doesn't talk about the devil that much or sin or hell. We don't, just don't speak it in it because everybody's going to heaven, right? No matter what you do, no matter how, oh, you're all going to be forgiven. We're all going to heaven. No problem. Well, Jesus is here to say, be careful of that. We look through all the scriptures. He's constantly talking about the evil one. He's constantly talking about the devil. He talks about heaven and hell. We hear it from the church fathers. We hear it from the saints. We hear it from the Blessed Mother. It's all over. St. John Paul, St. Pope John Paul II said it too. We are now officially in the final combat between the Christ and the Antichrist, the church and the Antichurch, the devil and God. It's here. And that battle is here. And we're in it. Okay? Holy Mother Church calls heaven the church triumphant. That means our brothers and sisters that are in heaven now, they went through their trials and tribulation, they ran the race, they did what they had to do, and now, thank God, they're in heaven. Then we have the church suffering. Our brothers and sisters are in purgatory. We still have to be purified. But there's suffering in that. And then there's the church militant. And we forget that. I always used to think about that. How could we fight an enemy we don't know about? How could we fight an enemy they think he doesn't exist? He does exist. This is not fire and brimstone. It's not the old. This is it. Jesus is warning us. Be careful. We could lose our salvation. 
Not everybody's going to make it. So what do we do? Well, we have to listen. We have to keep vigilant. We have to look at our lives and say, are we doing the right thing? You know, we get fooled. Two people are planting seeds. And the seeds are the word of God, the goodness, the word of evil, okay, and what he wants. And the ground isn't the ground. That fertile ground is our soul and our mind and our free will. We have to be careful. And if anybody has, I've been having a lot of trouble since I've been down here with the grass. No matter what you do, the weeds come back. No matter how hard you try to kill them, they're always there. You know, they just keep coming back. We've got to be careful. Sometimes we think we're doing nothing. Eh, we compromise on the commandments. We compromise. That means those seeds are being planted. We have to be careful. Okay? We have to be careful. One of the church fathers, I'm trying to remember which one it was, I read it a while ago, said something very, very interesting. He says, we should live and act as Jesus taught us and what he did in his first coming so that we don't dread in terrible fear of his second coming. Because that's going to be a problem. So we should live that way. We should do what he told us to do and try to stay in the best state of grace. How did Jesus come the first time? He came as a little innocent baby, right? Unassuming, unthreatening, innocent. Nobody's afraid to go next to a baby. He's approachable. You know, he didn't come in all his power. People would have ran away. He came in approachable. He's here. He was born in a barn, not in a, not in a castle or anything anywhere. Okay, he's as down to earth as he possibly could be. What do you want to do with a baby? You want to hug it, you want to kiss it, you feel close to it, you feel comfortable. But when he comes again, He's not coming as a baby. And we have to realize that that's a reality. He's coming as a judge. And when his angels come down, the harvesters, they're going to harvest all the crops. And what are the crops? Our souls. And they fully know who belongs to the kingdom of God and who belongs to the kingdom of Satan. And they did that by their own choice. Nobody pushed them into it. And if you found that your whole life was lived According to the kingdom of God, you're going to go to heaven. If you did it with the other one, you're not going to go to heaven. Okay? We can't go to heaven if we're in a state of sin. Okay? We have to do what we were told to do. We have to live the life we live. And we've got to be careful. Again, vigilant. If there ever was a time to really get close to God and his church, now's the time. There's never been a time like this. You could go on for hours with that. Believe me. Oh, we've always had this. No, 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 no. There's never been a time like this. Evil is showing it. It's become very brazen now. It says whatever. You, you can see it. You don't even need the, the, the grace of discernment anymore. It's right out there. It says what it wants to do, and that's it. And if you choose that, that's it. There's no other place to go. Everything we do down here or don't do, we take with us into eternity. And when we stand before God, we're going to have to give an account of that. Now, we worry about the end of the world, the end of the world, the end of the world. We're probably going to be the end of our world personally before it's the end of the real world. So we have to be in the best state we could be, the best state of grace. Because when he comes down as a judge, game over. You don't want to go through the door of judgment with Jesus. Nobody Nobody can get it. Nobody. We cannot go through his justice. We can't. We don't deserve anything. We're all sinners. We need his mercy. So it's important that we do that. We have to, and Jesus is saying today, not to scare, but to prepare and wake you up. You know, sometimes you got to hear homilies once in a while and things, and not that I'm bragging or anything. you got to have your spiritual cage shaken up a little bit. We can't be everything wonderful and rosy, and the moon is shining, and the birds are singing. No. We've got to be in touch with reality. We've got to look at what's going on around us. Because Satan is extremely smart. He knows how to get to us, and he could grab us at any time. We can lose our salvation. So I'm going to end with what Jesus said. And he said it many times in the Bible. A lot of people see, some, see with blind eyes and hear with deaf ears. And we all say, what is he talking about? How could you see with blind eyes? He's not talking about physical eyes or physical ears. He's talking about spiritual eyes. So I'm going to repeat what he said. If you have the ears to hear it and you hear his message, and you have the eyes to see what's going on, 
then listen to it and act on it. God bless you. As people claimed by God, we have the confidence to approach uh, Him with our needs. That all the clergy and religious may be strengthened in their witness to God's kingdom, and that He may rise above many vocations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That public servants may possess the virtues of honesty and integrity in their work, let us pray to the Lord. That those who are marginalized or overlooked by society may be blessed with the certainty that Jesus loves and knows each one of them by name, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the goodness of the Lord may be revealed through us as we place ourselves in service to one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all who have died may soon rest in peace in God's eternal kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our Christian brothers and sisters who are being persecuted all over the world, and for the suffering souls in purgatory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for any special prayers or petitions we have in our prayer book, or any special prayers or petitions we hold in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful God, with trust, we place before you the needs of your people around the world. Please listen to our prayers and answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed the Lord God of all creation, for true goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good will of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, this most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to internal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed Kali Alard, the found of all Kaliness. May Kali, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and internal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us, Lord, to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Mark, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For kingdom, the kingdom of power, power and the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but of the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign, Forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. peace, peace.
Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, 
the perpetual memorial of the passion of your son, grant we pray that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in hope and peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God, a guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, in you, Mary. trusted his only Son. In you, Mary, placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us to show yourself and Father and the path of life. Obtain, obtain, obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. O salutaris hostiam, quiceri pandus of hostium, tabra prefer Sí.